Hi there, my name is Christina. Welcome to my YouTube channel. And today I am excited for this video. I am talking about five things that I love that are kind of more obscure or maybe just not quite as trendy or kind of the thing people are doing. And these are things that are a little bit off the beaten path that I still think should not be disregarded. They should be considered in your home, either that you're renovating or decorating. So let's get into my five kind of less popular they're not unpopular because that was my I did a, a video of unpopular design ideas that I have but these are just less popular they're things that people aren't really doing as much but I think they are gorgeous and there's a reason why they should be being done a little bit more than they are but first I have my Diet Coke and I, when I'm at home and I don't go get a fountain drink, which is the ultimate way to get a soda. I know everyone is into McDonald's fountain drinks. My favorite is actually 7-Eleven or the Cheesecake Factory. Theirs is the best, it's just extra bubbly. But at home, I do it in a mason jar and I don't like ice from the freezer. I don't like the ice that your freezer makes. So bagged ice, I know, it's really picky. Some people love the pebbled ice. I'll do it if I'm on a desert island, I have nothing else, but it's not my favorite. Ooh, that was close. And I'd love to say I'm using a metal straw because I'm so conscientious of the planet. Not that I, you know, want to destroy the planet, but my husband bought them at Costco, so it's what I have. But yes, only metal straws, not plastic. Unless I'm going to McDonald's. All right, now that we're hydrated, I have my five less popular home decor and home design things that I am in love with and you should be too. All right, number one is, I believe it's called a Wassily chair. They were invented in the 1920s. I, I'm gonna sound like I'm an expert in interior design. I actually had to look up where they came from, who invented it, and they're invented, they're invented by a man named Marcel Brewer, maybe Brower, and it was in the 1920s, and it was basically a reduction of a club chair, but with this metal frame and a leather seat in back that reminded him of the club chairs that were popular at the time, but it was just a scaled back, pared down version of it with a metal frame that he said was inspired by bicycles. So I thought that was so cool. I just like these chairs. There, you can find them various price range. They have like original antiques from the 1920s and those are a fortune, like $5,000 kind of price tags. And then they have kind of knockoffs that like Wayfarer will sell for a couple hundred dollars. And I just think these are architecturally like a really interesting chair. I first discovered them from Rosie Huntington Whiteley's Instagram page. She, I mean, she's stunning when it comes to fashion, but don't sleep on her home decor. She has beautiful homes that she decorates stunningly. I love looking at her homes that she, and she renovates homes and she decorates her homes. So she has pristine taste, gorgeous. And I first saw these chairs on her Instagram feed is where I first, it was a few years ago. I'd never really seen this chair before. And ever since then, I just kind of am trying to find a place to put them in my house. And they're usually like a metal frame that's like a silver frame. And they're just interesting, different, and I like them because you don't see them everywhere. As everyone knows, I'm a lover of like the boucle swivel chairs, which I probably will end up purchasing from CB2. And they're, they're everywhere. But those are sort of just a popular chair that I agree is beautiful. But you see it all over Instagram. You see it all over YouTube. It's everywhere. But these Wassily chairs are just sort of less done. But none less creative or interesting. They still have their place in interior design that they kind of... I don't know, I just like that they're different and you would definitely notice them in someone's house because they're just a little bit different from what other people are doing, but not to like obscurity where it's just strange, just a really good chair. So that is my first item, the Wassily chair. And I hope I'm saying that right. Okay, number two, how do I, how do I get into this? Okay, my number two thing that's less popular, 
but not unpopular is everyone does like ashy wood planked floors and I love those but something to consider that's maybe just a little bit different and this used to be in style I'm going back like 20 years ago big travertine tiles that are in a beige to neutral color or doing your floor in a concrete which is what my house is just doing something a little bit different than the traditional wood floors that everyone is putting in their modern homes and not to say that the wood floors aren't a good choice i love those but if you're wanting your home to be modern but just a little bit different than what everyone else is doing consider putting in like a big travertine tile or doing polished concrete floors and they have to be decorated a little more carefully because a house with a hard surface floor like that can appear a bit more cold. So my home has gray concrete floors. And so I have to add in wood elements, cozy materials, which I'm still doing. My house is still being decorated. Just to sort of offset that sort of austere part of a house that can be a little bit too cold, too masculine. So wood does that easily. So that's why I think people choose wood floors and they're just gorgeous. But don't just ignore the idea of like a travertine. First of all, they're probably cheaper than wood floors. They're easier to maintain. They won't get damaged as easily. So there's something to be said for them. And I've seen them in homes recently and I think they're beautiful. And I think that they make your house just look a little bit more unique than what everyone else is doing. And they're a lot easier to maintain, deal with, have as your flooring. And for me, the concrete floors are really easy, maintenance free for the most part. They do get a little scuffed and scratched, but nothing like wood floors. And my kids can't really wreck them. We have a pool, they can come in and out of the pool with concrete floors. They're not gonna have like the water sit on the wood and ruin it. So I think just kind of choosing something else than just the ashy floors can be something a little bit more unique, different. The big travertine tiles can kind of be in that beigey, warm family, kind of like the wood floors. So they act as a neutral that any decor can go on. So I just think that's a different choice that I kind of like. And I've seen homes that do a, a different, like a stone or concrete for their floors. And they add in like wood ceilings or wood paneling or lots of earthy warm tone furniture. And that can offset the austere coldness of those stones or concrete. So there's ways to decorate. You have to be a little bit more careful with how you decorate with them but I think the wood's easier, but I think you'll have a much more interesting house in the end with floors other than wood floors. Okay, Diet Coke break. Okay, number three, and this one actually might be a less popular as well as an unpopular opinion, but I actually like matchy matchy. I know the big trend these last few years have been don't buy the whole set. That's an awful idea. Don't buy the set of furniture for their living room. Don't buy the set for your bedroom. You need to mix and match. You need to have different nightstands from your dresser. You need to have two different couches that they go together but they don't match and i actually disagree for most people reason number one unless you have a very like earth toned house that has a mix of organic things very much the studio mcgee i think that works for her type home or an eclectic home but i think for most people it's actually quite hard to master that styling because they have to be different enough or they're done on purpose, but not so different that they don't make sense. It's hard to master that. It goes together, but they don't match. And I think most people don't get it right, unless you're Shay McGee or, you know, one of her predecessors. I don't know. It's hard to do. I love interior design and I find it challenging to know how best to do that. And I think with my style being a bit more on the modern side, in a lot of modern interior design, like I'm thinking like RH type style, they have the match. And I actually think that the restoration hardware 
sets and different things, they look good together. So you buy the two nightstands and the matching dresser. I actually kind of like that. And not that you can't mix and match. I actually think it's safer. As long as you buy a beautiful, modern looking piece, I think it's okay to be matchy matchy. But if you're buying things from the 90s on Craigslist and you're like, oh, it's a matching set. That's not what I mean. But I think more modern designed furniture that's for today, that's current today, I actually think buy the set. And even like love seats and couches, buy them that go together. If you're not sure how to decorate a room, it's easier to just have them go together. So I'm saying it's a less popular idea because the trend over the last few years has been to mix and match. And I think people are scared to go in and buy the set because everyone online and on Pinterest and on blogs is saying, don't be matchy matchy, get things that just go together. So I think people are scared to go that route. When I think your house would be beautiful if you had two couches that were exactly the same mirroring each other or the nightstands match the dresser, it goes. And you can add in other elements like a beautiful rug and a wassily chair in the corner to break up the monotony of having the matching furniture but you have some uniformity. That makes it easier to decorate and style a room. And I like the uniformity that it gives. I love symmetry and all of that. So for me, I say buy the set and that will make your home look more elevated and luxe because it works and it goes together as opposed to having weirdly mismatched furniture because that's what some person on a blog told you to do. And she's really good at it and you might not be. So that's just my humble opinion. Okay, my fourth less popular idea is open showers. Now we are currently remodeling all of our bathrooms and we decided to do in our guest bathroom an open shower. So what this means that there's various degrees of openness. Ours is basically covered on three sides, but then there's no glass to enclose the structure altogether. But it's, it's a, the room kind of creates a little bit of a sauna because it's a small bathroom. And we just like the minimalness of it. There's just one piece of glass and then the other sides are the marble stone. And we just thought this was kind of a minimal paired back way to do a bathroom. And we liked it because not everyone else is doing it. I have seen it on different Instagram accounts that are a little more minimal and modern. And we just quite liked the look of it and not having to deal with a curtain or a door that closes and we didn't do this for the other bathrooms just for this one and I just like that it's something you don't see every day a lot of times people do their bathrooms the same way everyone else does and so I just kind of like that it's a little bit outside the box but not so strange that it's like what's wrong with your bathroom so just a little bit off you know the, the bell curve of what people are doing with their bathroom remodels and i just love the minimalness of it you really can focus on the beautiful marble stone and the hardware and less about like what curtain you have up in the bathroom so really really love that so i would encourage you if you're remodeling your bathrooms or anywhere in your home to sort of think What's something a little bit different I can do here? Could I bring this stone up the whole wall instead of just a little bit up? Or this hardware looks a little bit more interesting and unique than what everyone else is doing. And if you love it, absolutely choose that. So all that to say is when you're considering a remodel or doing your bathroom, choose things that are what everyone's doing but that you love. And I think you'll have a really unique Home. So for us, that was having an open glass door, which I think is a underdone, underused design choice in bathrooms. Kind of fun and a little bit different. It has a very like spa-like or like a hotel kind of vibe. I love it. Okay, last but certainly not least of my less popular opinions is the, I love the ultra, ultra minimal design look. And now I'm not talking about the minimal design of like, Shay McGee because she has a few things out and for most people that would be pretty minimal especially how it's staged because there's no real personal items out and especially with the Marie Kondo thing this has been a 
popular trend as of late is to have this minimal modern look over the last few years. But I'm talking the ultimate minimal house. And while I realize it's not all that practical and even behind me, this is too much for what I'm talking about. So I don't think I actually would do this, but I do love it and appreciate it, at least from a design point of view. Now these homes have like nothing in them. They have like one big vase and it might not even have anything in it. It's just a vase on a counter and everything else is empty. And I just, the reason why I love it, it works especially in really interesting architecture. And I think that's kind of what they're going for is like this house with these huge windows, like that's what you're showing is, you know, the beautiful, you're showing the beautiful outdoor space and you don't really need to have that much on the inside. And I just think this is a really interesting design and I applaud anyone that can actually do it. There actually are a few home, I'll, I'll show some pictures here of people that actually have kids and manage to do it. And maybe they're just showing one side of the camera and behind them is a bunch of other stuff, which I highly doubt because of just how minimal it is. But they love this design so much that they're willing to make it work with a family, which I can't quite get there, but I do love looking at it. And it makes me feel just very calm and zen. And I ultimately don't love a whole bunch of clutter. And I just love these empty surfaces. And it looks like they haven't really fully moved in yet, but I kind of love that. So those are my five things. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you were able to enjoy your coffee or your water or Diet Coke like me. And thanks for hanging out with me talking design and let me know what things are a little more obscure that you love. And I'd love to hear in the comments. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you in my next video. Bye-bye.